Hello Northside Elementary School. Welcome to the WJTV 12 News Studios in South Jackson. My name is John Conway. I'm a meteorologist with Storm Team 12 and I bring the weather to you during the news at noon as well as on Saturday and Sunday nights. I heard that you're all learning how a little bit about the weather and I thought you may want to see how we at Storm Team 12 put together our weather forecasts and then present it to you on the news. So let's take a look inside the studio and I'll show you how it's done. This is the 12 News Newsroom. This is where our reporters, producers, and editors work. Basically, if it's not weather, this is where it happens. But the Storm Team 12 meteorologists, we work at the weather desk over here in Studio A. Welcome to the Storm Team 12 Weather Desk. This is where our meteorologists work preparing their forecasts and preparing their graphics for you on air. I want to introduce you to some of the tools that we use when we're putting our forecast together and we're putting together our state-of-the-art graphics. One of the most important tools that we have access to is the National Weather Service chat. This is directly from the National Weather Service office in Jackson, Mississippi, and in fact we can access weather service offices all across the United States. Meteorologists at the Weather Service work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and this is all of the latest information that is coming from the forecasters at the National Weather Service. Now, not everyone has access to this chat room. Only members of the National Weather Service, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as well as federal and local emergency management directors, as well as television weathercasters, and a number of other groups of people have access to this. Now, some of the things that we have to show for you here. The Weather Service is constantly putting out new forecasts. So here we have the zone forecast package. This is giving us forecasts for all points in central Mississippi and portions of Louisiana. For example, here's a forecast for the next eight days for Hines County, including the city of Jackson and the city of Clinton. You could scroll down here. Here's a forecast for Rankin County, including Pearl, and we have all of the counties in our viewing area, including several counties in Louisiana. Another thing that's important to help us understand what's going on with the weather is the area forecast discussion. Now, what, the, what this tells us is exactly what the forecasters at the Weather Service are thinking when they write their forecast. So here, what they're doing is they're explaining why they think it's going to be sunny or why they think it's going to rain on a certain day. They're also explaining why they think it's going to be warm or why they think it's going to be cold. And that helps us as TV weathercasters put together a mental picture of how the weather situation is shaping up all across our region. Some of the other tools that we use when we're forecasting the weather are numerical forecast models. This is the webpage for the College of DuPage. They have an excellent website where you can access all kinds of computer models. Now we use several computer models all indicated by these little tabs up here. Each computer model is put out by a different organization. Sometimes you'll hear us refer to t the American model. Sometimes you'll hear us refer to the European model. All we're talking about is the countries where the these models come from. So each model is slightly different and is giving its own prediction of what's going to happen. For example, this model here is called the GFS, Global Forecast System. This is one of the models produced here in the United States. So when we put together our forecast together, one thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the big picture. Here's the United States. I'm going to pull up one of our parameters here. And this is going to give us kind of an image of how the atmosphere is going to change over the United States over the next couple of days. I can scroll the time bar here and we can see, kind of get a, a picture of how, what the GFS model thinks is going to happen over the next couple of days. We can also use these models to predict uh, precipitation. Go down here to our precipitation products. And here we can see where the model thinks it's going to rain over the next couple of days. And of course, there's not a whole lot of rain in the forecast over the next couple days. Now, if I want to take a closer look at Mississippi, I can select the southeast. Now we're looking at the southeastern United States, including Mississippi. And this model is telling us right now that we're not expecting any rain for the next several days. In fact, it doesn't look like we're going to see rain again until 
maybe Thursday or Friday. So here is another way that we can get an idea of what's going to happen. Another thing we do is we compare with other models. Here is another model. This is called the NAM, the North American Mesoscale Model. Again, this is a different model that analyzes the weather in a slightly different way to give us a better idea of what is going to happen. So here, if I'm thinking about when is it going to rain again, I'll click here on the southeast. So here we're looking at Mississippi once again. It's set to, um, to the rainfall. And as I scroll through over the next couple of days, this model is also saying that we're not expecting any rain for the next couple of days. So as a forecaster, I can now be more confident in telling you it's not going to rain for the next couple of days. As we continue to advance this over the next few days, this model is thinking, oh, we may have a shower or two on Tuesday. So remember the other model said we weren't going to see any rain on Tuesday. This model is saying we might see some rain on Tuesday. So what I'm going to do now is say there is a slight chance of a shower on Tuesday when I give you my forecast on the air. Looking at all these computer models, one of the things you may be asking yourself is why don't we just let the computer models do the forecasts for us? Well, there's a very important reason for that. The atmosphere is extremely complicated. The number of factors that go into creating the weather that we have are so numerous, no computer model can possibly account for all of them and give you an accurate forecast. That's why we have humans interpreting these forecast models. Sometimes, based on our own experience, we can predict things happening that the computer model can't predict. For example, a lot of these computer models have a hard time in detecting how cloud cover or winds are going to affect your temperatures. And today, which is a very sunny day with relatively light winds, is a great example of that. Here, I have pulled up the GFS model. That's one of our American models. And here is what the GFS thinks the cloud cover is going to be for today. Today is November 1st. It's a Friday. The GFS, this model is saying that it is going to be sunny over Mississippi today. But that has some implications. Let's take a look at what it's predicting for the winds and the weather. So now in this part of the model, I'm looking at what the GFS model thinks is going to happen with the temperature and the winds today. As I scroll this to this afternoon, this model is saying if you can very carefully see here, it's saying that the winds are going to be light today, maybe 5 to 7 or 5 to 8 miles per hour. That's a relatively light wind. And it's predicting that the high temperature in Jackson is going to be 54 degrees. Now, as a human, my experience is telling me that when we have sunny skies and light winds, the temperature is usually going to be a little warmer than the computer model is telling us. This computer model is telling us 54, but I know that this computer model sometimes doesn't get the temperature right when we have sunny skies and light winds. So today I am predicting the high temperature will actually be a few degrees higher. I think it's going to get up to 56 degrees. And the same thing happens at nighttime when you have clear skies and light winds. These computer models sometimes predict the temperature is going to be too warm. When you have clear skies and light winds, that's when you get some of your coldest mornings. So whenever I see that there's going to be no cloud cover and light winds overnight, I'm going to usually predict a temperature that's maybe a degree or two cooler than these computer models tell me. So these computer models are only hints. They help give us a big picture view of what's going on. But as a forecaster, we use our human experience to better forecast and more accurately forecast the weather conditions that you're going to see over the next several days. So now, after looking at the National Weather Service forecast, after looking at the computer models, I then put together my own forecast. Here are my forecast numbers. I take forecast notes, and now I take all this information, and I put it into our graphics system over here so that I can provide a more interesting presentation for you when you and your family watch the news.
This is our graphics program. This is called WSI Max. And this allows us to do all kinds of things. For example, I have a graphic pulled up here that gives us the current conditions in Jackson. These conditions are all live and current. And this is why being a human forecaster is important because remember just a short while ago I said our GFS model was predicting the high temperature was going to be 54 degrees this afternoon. Well it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon and the temperature is already 53 degrees and we still have a couple more hours of daylight so this temperature is probably going to bump up a couple degrees probably pretty close to 56 to where I predicted it was based on my experience. This graphic system also gives us all kinds of other tools that we can look at to analyze the weather and tell you what's going on. For example, we have our Live IMAX 12 radar here. And this is a radar. This is going to show us where there is rain or snow falling across the region. Also going to tell us, we also have a satellite capability in here that's going to tell us where the cloud cover is. Now, of course, on this Friday, the skies are nice and clear. There's no rain, anything, there's no rain going on. So there's nothing showing up on the Live IMAX 12 radar. This little bit of green here, that's just a bunch of noise. That doesn't indicate any precipitation. Here we have some forecast graphics here. Here is my forecast for the midday on this Friday afternoon. Pull it up here. This is my forecast every two hours, 1 p.m. I thought it was going to be 51, 3 p.m. I think it's going up to 55, 5 p.m. 53. I think we're going to have a clear and cool overnight. And if I click this wizard button here, I can change everything it says. I can change the times. I can also change the words as well. If I think it's going to rain tonight, I can type in, I think it's going to rain tonight. Look for some rain showers this afternoon. Now one of our more interesting graphics, and one of our more fun graphics, is our next WeatherMaker graphic. I'm going to pull it up down here. This allows us to kind of show you in a bigger picture an animation of what's going on. So I'm going to go in here and show you how we edit this. So on this map, we have our low pressures, our high pressures, and our fronts. And I can move these anywhere I want. So right now, this is how it's going to move. I advance it like this. We're going to zoom into Mississippi where I'm telling you this afternoon it's going to be sunny and cool. I can move this high pressure around. If I don't think it's going to be a high pressure, I can just delete it and now it's gone. And I can give you the forecast through tomorrow as well. Here I'm zooming out, giving you a little bit of a big picture look. There's going to be a dry cold front coming through Saturday afternoon into Sunday morning. It's not going to bring us any rain, but it's going to keep our temperatures a little cooler as we look ahead to the second half of the weekend. This also gives us very interesting capabilities when we're talking about events all around the world. We don't just have to look at the United States. We can look all around the planet. So here's the animation of our next weather maker. High pressure today, no clouds whatsoever. It's going to be a sunny and cool afternoon. Looking ahead to tomorrow. Dry cold front's going to come through tomorrow. No rain with it, but it's going to keep us on the cooler side. Now some of you may know that the Summer Olympics are next year over in Tokyo, Japan. So next year we may want to give you the weather that's going on in Japan. I can do that here too. Here I can fast forward here and I can show you a weather map for Japan. And what I can tell you right now is that this afternoon it's going to be cloudy in Tokyo. Looks like there's going to be a little rain up in Aomori, maybe some snow up in Sapporo, up in northern Japan. So we can, uh, with using some of these tools, we can bring you the weather that's going on all around the world when there's an event where you may be interested in knowing what the weather is going on. So you've seen how the meteorologists at Storm Team 12 put together our forecasts and how we prepare our graphics, but nothing has gone on television yet. Right now, we are in the control room just outside of the studio where our producers and directors work. These folks control the cameras. They basically control everything that you see on your television screens. And these folks also play a very, very important role in helping us show the weather to you. Now when you watch Storm Team 12 on the news, on 12 News, it looks like we're pointing at maps and we're pointing at graphics, but in fact, we're not pointing at anything. Behind us is nothing more than a big green wall that we call a chroma key. And remember the control room that we showed you a little earlier, the directors in there can control everything that comes up behind me, such as a temperature map. Let's throw up a different one. 
Here we have a view of the Vicksburg Bridge. What else can they put up behind me? Here we go as a live look over Interstate 55 at Patty Peck Honda, thanks to our good friends there. Now let's bring up Max 2 up on the chroma key behind me. And there we go. Now we're looking at your eight day forecast. So if you were actually watching us doing the news here in the studio, this is what you would see, just me pointing at a screen. If I want to know what I'm pointing at, I have to look at either one of these monitors off to my left or right. Now it takes a little bit of practice to get used to doing this because I've got to look somewhere else relative to where I'm pointing, but after a good deal of practice, it doesn't become that hard that you can point at exactly what you want. For example, this little icon indicating that we have to turn our clocks back uh, this weekend. We can point out here that it's going to be 63 degrees on Monday and I may want to talk about our election day forecast on Tuesday where it's going to be 69 degrees, just a few sun and clouds. And that's how we put the news and the weather on your television screens at home. And that's a look at the 12 news station and a brief look at the work that Storm Team 12 meteorologists do to forecast the weather and bring it to you and your families every day. I've enjoyed sharing my job with you. I hope you've all enjoyed. Thank you so very much for watching.